Hi, this is Jesse Miller, and I'm coming to you today with five ways to make your online church better. Now, by now, we're tired of hearing the word coronavirus. We want it to go away, but it is a reality. It's what we're dealing with. And so uh, we're all having to use live video. We're having to use Facebook. We're having to use uh, Zoom. We're having to use YouTube Live, whatever means you're using. But to get your message across, you have your normal Sunday morning service and people are at home in their houses. They're, they've got their you know feet propped up on the couch, whatnot. And so we've gotta be more creative. We've gotta do a better job online of our online presence to help accommodate the situation we're in. So there's been some great people who have been making videos uh, about how to use your tech and how to do this and how to do that. But what I've noticed is I've watched uh, a number of streams on Sundays and I've noticed a couple things. And so I want to give you five things that you can do. They're not tech related at all. There's plenty of stuff out there for that. These are five things that I think that churches could do to make the experience a lot better because here I am sitting at home myself on a Sunday morning and we're having church and I've just been thinking, you know what? There, Maybe this one does something great and this one does something great. So we're kind of taking and, and using parts of different ones to create a whole experience for our family. And if a, a church really wants to get creative, I think there's a lot of opportunity here. So number one, the number one thing you could do if you're not doing it already is go live. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Okay. It's great that you want a professional recording. It's great that you want it to look good and you want everything to be set in place. But I promise you what people at home want on a Sunday morning at 9, 10, 10, 30, 11, what time, whatever time your service is, they want to see something live. They want to know that what they're watching is a live broadcast because they're going to go to church and it's going to be live. So why can't they do a live broadcast? In fact, I would be perfectly okay if a pastor wanted to record a live stream at his house or her house and they just wanted to bring one person to play guitar or something like that. That would be better than a professionally uh, produced service because it shows intimacy. There's a lot of uh, things that you can use with a live video as well. Number one. You know, you've got a lot of interactive comments that are happening and somebody could be replying to those comments in real time. Now, I've seen this done with premieres of videos. That's great. But somebody asking a question that's preaching or teaching or doing whatever and then re replying or maybe have somebody else doing the actual typing, but replying to comments as they come in or answering questions as they come in. Make it a Bible study. Make it an intimate experience. Most people, they're either watching it on a one TV, the whole family's there, or they're, they're individually watching on their phones. So what a great way to interact with your congregation. You know, what a great way to get intimate. I mean, think about on a Sunday morning, obviously you're in a preaching format. You're in a teaching format. What you're watching me do right now is a preaching, teaching style, right? So... That's fine if you're trying to get an information to them, but right now what people really need is a connection. They want to feel connected to the person. And it's hard to feel connected on a Sunday morning when you're watching a video. It's a lot better if you could do it in a more intimate style, a more intimate experience where uh, things can be interactive between both you and the live stream, but also between you and family members. And we'll get to that in just a second. So number one tip, go live. Whatever you do, it's okay if you mess up. It's okay if it's not professional. It's okay. These are, these are the people that we serve at our churches, right? And so uh, they're okay with us not being perfect. Right now, what we want most of all is connection because the only connection we have is maybe with the checkout person at the grocery store right now, or maybe you're still going to work, whatever it might be. The problem is, is that people need connection. We are not meant to be islands. We're meant to connect. And even though we can't connect in person, we can certainly connect with uh, an interactive experience. So I would rec highly recommend going live. All right, you ready? Tip number two, create a service for teens and kids. All right, my wife and I have noticed that 
it's great that we have a Sunday morning service, but when we go to church, the church has a separate teen service and a separate kids service. Now, they've directed us to some of the videos they would have watched in those services at my church, but what I've seen other churches do is create a whole experience for their kids personally. Now, maybe your church isn't that big, that's okay. Maybe a five minute video from somebody that's the children's director or whoever it might be, or the youth pastor. Uh, maybe something to connect with the kids, okay? To connect with the teenagers, to connect with the little ones. Uh, the Really, the best ones I've seen are ones where uh, there's a downloadable PDF of, of some of the graphics and things that people could print out if they have a printer. Another thing I've seen is uh, where they do you know, just a little interaction between two people. Maybe you record the puppet skit. Maybe you record, uh, you know, a little, a little video clip. They want to know and hear from you personally. If people at your church were going to go to church online, they could have already been doing that up until now. They didn't have to wait till now to go online. There's plenty of online experiences at church. So now we're kind of forced to do this, right? We don't have a choice. So... Let's use this time to create something, you know, maybe it's way out of your comfort zone, but I promise you, I'm recording this video on an iPhone 10s Max. It's not even the latest iPhone, and the picture quality is great, the sound is great, and it's high quality video, and so you can record stuff in the high quality, high resolution, that looks good, and it doesn't probably cost you a thing. You can upload it to YouTube. You can upload it to your Facebook. You can upload it to your church thing. What else do you have to do right now? Right now, all we've got is time. So why don't we spend some time making something that means something for the whole family? Now, if you don't have the resources to, to do that, or maybe you, you uh, are just working with volunteers at your church, maybe phone phone a few people, call them up, ask them, hey, would you mind recording a little video clip? I just want to send something to the kids to encourage them. And so I promise you that will mean so much to the parents, to the families. And if you don't have the resources, find one online. There's a number of good curriculums out there right now that um, are providing at least some kind of uh, interactive experience where the parents can download something, can do a worksheet with the kids, can can do coloring pages with their kids, okay? A lot of times we spend so much on the main adult experience and we forget about the kids, especially in times like this. So don't forget the kids. They're important. They mean a lot to you and they mean a lot to God. And they're the future of the church, so we've got to provide something for them. All right, now think about challenges okay you probably haven't thought about this but you have an audience right now that is at their house so the the third tip I want to give you is do a challenge you've got a family maybe you know you've only thought about working to a crowd of adults but remember you've got kids sometimes you've got families and trust me if you think that this challenge idea is just for the adults then, I mean, just for the kids, then you're mistaken because this challenge is for everybody, okay? So imagine you're preaching a sermon and you, you've got the worship done because you did it live and you've got, you know, maybe a guitarist or maybe you've, you've recorded a, the whole band or, or you've got the whole band there live. That's great. That's awesome. Now, think about this. You come up and... Uh, you know, we'll talk about announcements and, and giving in just a second, but you come up there and you say, okay, everybody, now I want to give you a challenge. All right. So you're at your house, your, your car, your grocery store, wherever you're at. Uh, right now we're going to do the, the one minute challenge. How many of you, who can find the most, I don't know, red pens in your house? Okay. Who can who can, uh, who can find the, the most interesting thing in their refrigerator and take a picture of it and upload it to this page? Crazy things, right? Something. You want engagement because the more people start engaging on social media, guess what happens? Other people see it. When they post something on your live video, other people get notified. Other people on Facebook. 
And so you want that engagement. You want them to interact. You want it because what are you doing? You're not only helping your, uh, your people and your church, but you're being a blessing to other people on Facebook. Uh, you're, they're going to see that. So they're going to post these things and then people are going to click and they're going to see, I wonder what that they, why they posted a comment on their church and they go look at it and it's like some moldy thing in their refrigerator, some crazy challenge. Okay. So challenge them or maybe challenge them who can find this verse in the Bible the fastest, who can find, I'm, or I'm going to give you a verse and then first person to paste uh, that verse in the comments wins a $5 gift card. We'll mail it to you after church, okay? Crazy things, I promise you. You'll get a lot more engagement. You'll get people like excited, like, oh, I wonder what the challenge is gonna be this week. So uh, do a challenge, it'll be fun. People, trust me, if you think that they're just gonna listen to your hour long sermon uh, without some uh, fun stuff, when they're sitting in their living room, you know, maybe some of the adults will, but the kids have tuned you out. You're gone, man. So we got to think creative. We got to think challenges. We got to think interaction. That's what the Christian life is all about is interaction anyway. All right. Tip number four, remind people why they should continue to give to your church. Okay. This always happens. People stop giving when they don't go to the church. And so what I've seen some churches do is they'll just flash up like ways you can give. That's fine. And then some churches have maybe gone too far the other way and have like got given a sob story. I'm not going to be able to pay my staff if you guys don't keep giving. I think that's wrong too. We should be in faith, not fear, remember? And so what are some ways that you can interact with people about why they, you should give? I think one of the best ways is maybe to have a story. Maybe to have a, you know, a story of somebody that was helped by your church. Maybe you talk about the different ways that you help. Maybe you talk about, you know, we have five staff people here and they're working hard for you. You see, we put this awesome uh, interactive ex worship experience together for you. Well, these people have been working on this all week to provide that to you. And it takes time and it takes creativity and it takes money because I still pay those people. Now, you don't even have to talk about who you pay, but what you should be doing is giving them reasons why they should continue supporting your church. Okay, it's not enough just to have a screen there. Well, here's ways to give. Yes, the faithful will always give. But what about the unfaithful? What about the people? What is it benefiting them? Well, you know, one way it's benefiting is we went out in the community this week and we gave away 200 meals. Whatever you did, it needs to be highlighted as a reason why they should continue partnering with your ministry. And then it should be easy to give. If you are still in the check only, <laughs> okay, we take cash or checks, then you're behind the times. Folks, we've got to have an online way to give. We also should be texting to give. In fact, uh, we set up text to give at one of my churches, and I tell you what, it was amazing. All I had to do was type in the number to the text to give, and it automatically pulled it out of my checking account and gave it whenever I did that. And it cost them almost nothing to do it out of my checking account. Great experience. So give your people a way to give and give them a reason to continue giving. Don't just say, well, the Bible says, because you know what, even though that's true, People still want to have another reason. It's the unfortunate times we live in, but you, your church is worth it. Your church deserves to get uh, compensated because you're pro still providing them a service. You should let them know, hey, you guys need to get married. Anybody needs to get married, baptized, whatever. We'll do it in a, in a COVID-19 safe way, okay? So make sure that they know all your services are still available to them and you're still there as their church for them to give to you. Okay, here's the last one. This is very important. If you have a small group system at your church, that's awesome. That's really a, a great way to connect on a personal level in your church. And so maybe you're still at a church, maybe your church has a regular Wednesday night service. You don't have small groups. But hopefully you do. Hopefully you prepared at least somewhat for this. Uh, 
what, what happened with COVID-19. If you didn't, then um, you need to try to mobilize some small groups because it's great to interact or uh, just between the pastoral staff and the worship team and the church on a Sunday morning. But I'll tell you what, the best connection that you're going to have is between your small groups and your church. So maybe you have a men's group, maybe you have a women's group, whatever you have. Now think about this. A lot of you provide coffee, you provide cookies, you provide tea, you provide all kinds of stuff when people come to your church. You don't have those expenses right now. You also don't have people flushing the toilet, so you don't have as much water expense on a Sunday. You don't have people coming into your service, so you're not turning on all the lights and everything. So your bills should be smaller, hopefully. And so don't tell me that you can't buy a subscription to a Zoom or to Ring Central or to any number of the apps, Skype or whatever the different apps are that you could use to provide a way for small groups to connect in your church. You need to have uh, a way for the small groups to be able to meet in, you know, however big a group is, let's say 15 people. It, you at least need to be able to have 15 people get on at a time in their small group setting and see each other's faces. I'll tell you what, my church did this and our, we, we connected with our small group and it was amazing because you know the people in your small group you may not know everybody in the church, but you know those small groups, so you know them by name, and you see them at church, and you say hi to them, and that's that small group becomes your group, and and when you're interacting in that kind of environment, then you can all talk, you can all discuss, you, hey, what's going on in your life right now? How are you dealing with this? Where are you going? What are you watching? What are you doing? And so you can bounce ideas off of one another. So this is a great time to take advantage of the ability to connect digitally between the people in your group. And all they need is a Zoom link. All they need is a Ring Central link. All they need is just a link to be able to connect uh, between each other. And so uh, that may cost you a little bit. Don't get the free one. Don't cheap out. Don't say, oh, well, Zoom gives me 40 minutes for free. That should be enough time. No, come on. Pay the $100 a month and get a subscription to one of those things. That's okay, $100 is probably not gonna break the bank. So pay for a subscription, uh, do a training, make sure the leaders all know how to use it and then have them disperse that to their small groups and then come up with a time schedule. Okay, this group's gonna use it this time and this group's gonna use it this time. And it, you know that is if you don't have the ability to have multiple groups. So you can space them out. You can say, well, usually you do it on Wednesday, but can you do it on a Tuesday night? Can you do it on a Thursday night? Can you do it on a Saturday? And try to come up with a way where your small groups can interact, and I promise it'll be a blessing to your church. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. My name's Jesse Miller. I've been a worship pastor for 25 years. I've got some videos on here on ways that you can in, in, increase in your area of worship in your church. And really what I do is I talk about ways that we can get better at church. We can give you some ideas that you can use in your sermons, in your congregation, and your kids, and your youth, and then of course in your worship time. So um, if you like this video, share it, subscribe to my channel, and we're going to be sharing a lot more videos like this in the coming weeks, and the coming months, and the coming years. So uh, thank you so much for watching. God bless.